<laughs> You're watching Randy Alvarez Market Report. I'm Randy Alvarez. With us, we have uh, Dr. David Hornbrook. He is, uh, for those of you non dentists that watch my Market Report, he is uh, really one of the pioneers of cosmetic dentistry. I don't think anybody would dispute that. He's well known all over the world. He speaks uh, to at, at, at thousands of dentists at one time talking about bite and talking about cosmetic dentistry and the new materials, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and that's really the speech. I think any dentist watching this knows who you are. Uh, <laughs> so I want to welcome you to our well, marketing Well, thank you. Report. I appreciate it. One of the things, and, 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 and plastic surgeons are, are guilty of this, dermatologists, right. is they don't give patients all of their options. Yeah. They may prejudge them or right. they don't uh, give their best advice or they let the patient make a mistake possibly. Right. And uh, so let's talk about this. This is one of your pet peeves. It is, and you know, you mentioned plastic surgeons, which I think are a little different than dentistry. You know, people go to a plastic surgeon thinking they're doing something to improve their appearance. Okay. Where dentistry may be, they're going in because they have a toothache or they have a swelling or they have a, a filling that broke. And so they're coming in with what I call need dentistry. I think it's our obligation, especially the way dentistry's changed, to let them know what we can do in terms of want dentistry. You know, whether it be whitening, whether it be metal free, whether it be just changing someone's self image or life with a beautiful smile. Our patients need to understand what we can offer them today. But tell me this, because look, I already know the, the, the science nerdy guy, and they have plastic surgeons like this too. They go, but Randy, somebody comes in for Botox, and I know they'd benefit from a neck lift or jowls or brow lift. Right. I don't want to upset them. Yeah. Because dentists will say the same thing. I don't want to look like I'm selling something. Right. So what advice do okay. you give to these people? Let, let me so they you, feel comfortable and, and, yes. doing it. Yeah, and, and this is what I teach the doctors I work with my hands-on program. This is what I do in my own office. So let's say you came in, and the first thing you said was, I don't like this one crown. It's got a chip or whatever, front tooth. Yeah. I'm not going to say, and again, this is what general dentists do because I've worked with thousands of them. They would say, I can fix that. All right, end of story. The way I would handle it, Love I would it. hand you a mirror. I would say, okay, Randy, if we fix that chip, or replace that one crown, are you gonna look in the mirror and say, I love my smile? And you say, well, I wish they were whiter. Okay, now the treatment plan just changed. I didn't tell you that they weren't white. You made your own treatment plan. So now it's whitening, and then we'll match to the whitened teeth. So I would say, okay, if we replace that crown or fix that chip, and you, your teeth were whiter, would you look in the mirror and say, I love my smile? Maybe you'll say yes, or typically what they'll say is, well, I wish they were a little longer. Okay, the treatment plan just changed. I didn't tell this you they were short. This is very nice, you know what you're saying, because a plastic surgeon, dermatologist watching this, they're coming in for one thing, but, and the typical right. doctor will say, okay, we'll take care of that, those jowls. Yeah. But they say, well, let's, let's take a look. Tell me what else, yeah. like And, and, what and I think it's important. Because this applies I, yeah, to anything across the board. Oh, absolutely it does. And, and I think that we don't need to say, like a plastic surgeon, say, yeah, you know, I know your eyes are saying, what do you think about your jowls, jowls or are your ears too far out? You know, all of a sudden you're planning things, you're saying, you know what, your, your ears are a little too far, I can help you out with that. I don't want to say that. Good. I want you to make the diagnosis. Good. So now all of a sudden you say, you, you need that chip fixed, you want your teeth whiter, and you wish they were longer. All right, now I'm going to explain the options that we can, we can go from there, whether it be direct bonding, whether it be veneers, whatever it is. Let them self-diagnose. Absolutely. By just asking and, and, them what else absolutely. you don't like? Is that and, what you say? Absolutely. What, what's the word track on that? Well, I say if you looked in, in the mirror, would you say, I love my smile. Okay. I have a great smile. And sometimes it's just fixing the chest. So you could say that, you know, if you looked in the mirror and said, I love my face. I mean, you could... Oh, for a plastic... Yeah. yeah. If you looked in the mirror and my eyes, I didn't have these little you know, little swollen areas here. Would I look at the mirror and say, you know what? I like the way I look today. They say, no, I don't like my nasal labial yeah. folds Yeah, I wish these weren't here. Okay, so, so if we filled, put some fillers in here, we fixed your eyes, you look in the mirror, you're going to say, you know, I like the way I look. Well, you know, how about and this right And they don't here? do it? Is that really a problem yeah. in dentistry? Because I know it is no. in the other. No, they don't. They would fix your chip. That's, what the, that's the you way know, they do You know, one of the it. things I said about you before you came in, and it was a lesson here at the Wellness Hour. One of the doctors aired at 5 p.m which I hate 5 p.m. You're competing with the news. Nobody has ever succeeded at 5 p.m. Right. And I said, next time that happens, call me. I don't care if it's the middle of the night because I go, Dr. David Hornbrook is like this too. He doesn't want to let a patient make a mistake. I don't want to let a doctor make a mistake. Yeah. He's paying this money for a half hour. Right. And I said, and, and I would have told him, give your money to charity. <laughs> don't run at that time. And if he decides and overrules me, that's fine. But then when it doesn't work and he calls me, because the impression is, I tried that and it didn't work. Right. No, you ran it at the right. wrong time right. against what we did. Right. And because Nicole is so nice, I mean, she tried her best, but I think she yeah. gave up too soon. Yeah. I wouldn't give up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't want to let him make a mistake. Right. Do you think that 
dentist, because I know, I mean, let patients self-diagnose too much without the doctor. Like they well, come in, I only want two front veneers. Yeah, I, I, I think ride. we need to plant seeds. And okay. again, the way we'd handle that is, well, I don't like the space between my two front teeth. I want that closed. We can do veneers. Again, I would say, well, how do you feel about the rest of your smile? How do you feel about the shape of those? Well, they're two pointer. They're shorter. I don't you like this. You get them chip. to admit it. A absolutely. And you know, I think that your, your your point with your commercial was excellent because when you talk to him, you, it, that whole investment that he made was not about you. It was about him. Why? Well, if it aired, he still paid you. You're still going to get paid, but he's not going to get the benefits that you really wanted him to get. So instantly, when you heard about that, it was about him. Yeah. And right? when they not fight us, you. they fight us a little bit. Yeah. But I would have. I, right. I wouldn't have given up. Yeah, because it was about your doc. It wasn't about you. Yeah. And okay. when I sit with my patients, it's not about me. You know, if I think, you know what, he just needs that chip fix. I mean, who am I to judge? I mean, maybe you want whiter teeth. Maybe one time in your life you'd like whiter teeth. All right. Maybe if you're going to have that space closed. Maybe that's one time in your life that you wish you had a great smile. You now have decided you're going to spend some money on your teeth. You know, I, sometimes I get chastised from, from clinicians that say, you know, that woman's 70 years old. Why would you make her teeth so white? Because she wanted them. Okay. Right? Because she needs it, but whether it be a bite couldn't, issue. Couldn't somebody or, say that that's a, a mistake too? Now it made the gums look darker. Well, but but the thing is, it, is when she looks in her, the mirror and she likes her smile. Okay. Yeah, that's not my smile anymore. That's a good one. Now good I can say, you know, Dorothy, you're 85 years old, and typically women that aren't 85 aren't going to have this bright white teeth. It'll look like a denture, and you have all your teeth, and you should be proud of that. You know, why don't we just make them look like a beautiful smile, but very natural, a little more natural? And I have patients that you know what. I have never invested money into my teeth other than a couple of grounds, you know, every couple of years. If I'm going to invest this ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, this is a time in my life that I want them to be bright white. And who am I to say okay. that's not going to work? Okay. You know, we, we do this with plastic surgeons, right? We've all done this on. You look at the Joan Rivers syndrome, where you look and say, you know what, that person has had way too much plastic surgery. That person is trying to look thirty when they're seventy-five. All right. But at the same time. They look in the mirror and they they like the way they look. So if, it, if, it, if it's a boost in their self-esteem, that's fine. Absolutely. This is a good. This is a new perspective. One, yeah. one last thing for the marketing report, um, and that is that you know I speak at the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine with with integrative medicine docs, and and I speak to the American Academy of Facial Plastic Surgeons, and I also believe that doctors need to give a bit of a, a mental expectancy, like a placebo effect, and so my feeling is that not enough doctors create this future of being better off. You on the phone, which I heard about you right. for t t 12 years, right. and I thought, what's this makes this guy so successful? What makes him tick? And sure enough, you got, I mean, you said that you tell them when you look in the mirror, I mean, you pay, elaborate on that. Right. And do you think that that's another thing that dentists don't do enough of, which is painting this picture of what's gonna happen when it's all done? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, you know. What and, do you and, say? Tell me what you say. Well, I love this. And these are patients that, yeah. that are realizing, you know, they look in the mirror and they say they wish they had a nicer smile now, right? So as we look to the future, even if it's whiter or longer teeth, who's to say that they're not going to have Restylane or surgery in, in the future? But I think that my, my, my point is that when you told me on the phone that you tell them it's expensive, but when you look in the mirror and you could finish this, what do you tell them? Right. I tell them when they look in the mirror, when we're done, they're going to wish that they had made their, this investment five years before. And that's, I mean, that's the future. You think about decisions you make today, right? Whether you, people work out today so they may meet a mate or they may stay healthy so they'll have a, a better life five or ten years down the road. We make decisions, especially in appearance and health related decisions, on the future. And I think a lot of dentists don't think about that. I mean, they don't think about that if I change this this person's smile, and plastic surgeons the same thing, yeah, or dermatologists. Yeah. If we don't offer this patient an opportunity to change their self-image, it could affect their life five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. Interesting. And so the biggest mistake doctors make in, in presenting to patients is the lack of presentation, maybe. Yeah, they treatment plan for themselves. They do it based on what they think would be good. Yes, absolutely. They don't dig enough for the motives of the patient? Absolutely, yeah, that's huge. I think, it, and, and that's across the board, whether it be Plastic surgeons, dermatologists, dentists. You know, in positive influence, in motivational psychology, they say in order to influence anyone to do anything, you have to find out what drives them, what right. motivates them. And I think that too many doctors on a superficial level, they just know, oh, you came in for this. You came mm -hmm. in for that. Oh, it says you want this. Yeah. But you dig deeper. Absolutely. You think that's what makes you a little better? You dig I'm deeper for motivations? Better. I think that... Well, no, that, you could say it. That, that I think that's why I get better treatment acceptance is because I found problems that the patient didn't share with me 
on that piece of paper. Okay. And also, I, I planted seeds. You know, I, I, I think From that, the second they walk in the door, oh, you yeah. say you plant seeds. We plant seeds. What does that mean? Well, you look in our office, and it could be a plastic surgeon, it could be a dermatologist, it could be a hair, a hair salon. There's something going on. It's not about, you know, pictures of the Grand Canyon on my wall or a picture of, of a beautiful lake. It's about the health industry and looking good. And smiling. And, yeah, absolutely. As, or looking good, it, it, okay. you know, you think about you going to a high-end hair salon, you, what do you look around? You don't see a bunch of before and afters, you don't see pictures of boats and cars. You see attractive people that you just want to kind of be like them. You, you may never be so like them. So that's what you have planned in your office. Absolutely. Because I've I, been there. I mean, absolutely. you've got testimonials going. I, absolutely. I want people Catalogs to, to, right there. Mm -hmm. I, in, in my before and after books, testimonials, anytime I have a smile or do any dentist for someone that says, wow, this is awesome, I love being here, I say, could you, when you go back to your office or you go home, can you write a little note on your, on your personal uh, stationery and send it to me about your experience? That goes in a book in my receptionary. That's what I want my patients to, to read, not Reader's Digest. Patients okay. want to be associated Aren't with a doctor. Aren't all dentists doing this? No. No, everyone has Reader's Digest People magazine, and, and they have pictures of the Grand Canyon or, now or You have a lot ocean. of photos, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know what I hear when they come in here? Randy, you don't know. People don't want to give their photos. I totally disagree. By taking these photos, what I'm saying is, you know what? I like what we did here. You look great and you should be proud of it. And that in itself. So that's no excuse where, oh, you don't oh, know. Because no. I hear it, by no. the way. Because I meet, you know, it's so funny. There's a one-to-one -one relationship. The most successful guys in, in all the industries have great photos. No. They have oh, an yeah. ability. But also you do great work. You know, we should mention. Because I get to infiltrate the most successful practices in the country. Right. And I'm the marketing guy that says, if you're not busy, you probably have something to do with yeah. it. It's not the economy. Yeah. So second to the fact that you've got more photos, you also do great work. Well, I think that's the first, so that's, that's 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 first obligation, right? So they've got to become it, excellent we have to also be, what we they We have do. to be educated and we have to be excellent. Okay, and you have, to be, you have to feel you're great. You have to feel deep, deep, deeper than Absolutely. Okay, Otherwise, good. I mean, how can I, you know, if I think I can offer you a gift by changing your smile, but I don't think I can deliver, how can I consciously it's not going to transfer. Try to create value. And, and, you know, your team members. You know, my team members, my staff, they, they're trying to treat my plan as much dentistry as possible because they know the quality of work I can deliver. And too many times I'll see people at, at conventions, there'll be staff members. They'll say, God, I wish you could do my veneers, but... <laughs> It's like, what? If, if you wouldn't have and they your work own, for the doctor. Yes. If you wouldn't have your own doctor do your surgery or your teeth. You say it's easy for you to create value because... Because it's about the patient, it's not about me. But also because you say you're, you, you feel like you're giving them a gift. Oh, I am giving Like you feel like you're doing a favor. Yes, I, I, absolutely them. I do. Maybe not so much a favor as but I think I'm giving them an opportunity to, I feel that way to be too. different. I feel that way too. I feel like, you know, and I tell my staff, I go, look, they don't get it. It's not their fault. But I'm convinced that if they do business with me, they're so much better off right. than if they don't. And you feel that way too. Absolutely. It's like we're in the transformation yeah. business. Yeah. But, you, you know, in... in you know, the fast moving training of paradise that I talk about, you know that. The reason why you think you're giving them a gift, because you know the successes they'll have. Because you've seen that. Yes. You could lay out all these docs and say, look what this doc did, look what this doc did, look what this doc did. Good point. And I can say, look what I did with this patient, this patient, this patient. They can't see that yet. That's why we're going to have to hang out after this and just brag about ourselves. I, I, like I don't two know. in the morning after <laughs> a couple of How about glasses? you brag about me, I'll brag about you. <laughs> exactly. I want to thank you for coming right, on this pleasure. marketing report. It's Good stuff. Awesome. Hey, pleasure to meet I you, by the way. enjoy spending time with you. Good. Yeah. And you lived up to, uh, you exceeded my expectations well, after hearing that. about you for 12 um, years. Unless my expectations, your expectations were really low. No, they were already way up Okay, high. good. I appreciate so, that. So uh, that's this week's report. We'll see you next week.